Welcome, we're your hosts Alicia and Whitney on Coming Coming Up Up Higher, where we're creating space through conversations, special guests, and inspiration for you to come up higher in the things of Christ in everyday life. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Coming Up Higher. Today, we're interviewing a friend of ours, Minister Bertram B.J. Major. He's just a really neat guy that we met while ministering in Augusta, Georgia, and he is the founder of BEJM Ministries. He's always on the go when it comes to ministry and is always trying to get the gospel of Jesus Christ to anyone and everyone. He's an author of two books and is a certified professional life coach. One saying that Minister Major not only teaches but lives by is, only what you do for Christ will last. And in this episode, we really dive into his testimony and struggles that he's had with anxiety and depression and suicide and even divorce, but yet in the midst of that, how God has brought him through and not only brought him through, but given him a testimony that he shares in his books and his podcasts and the teachings that he shares and just everything that he's involved in. So I really believe you're going to be encouraged to not only by listening to his message, but to do what God has called you to do and to step out and use what you have now to move forward. So let's go ahead and jump into this episode with our friend BJ. Hey, everybody, it's Alicia and Whitney, and welcome to another episode of Coming Up Higher. We have another great guest on today. We're going to have an awesome conversation. We have Minister Beatrum BJ Major with us. And we are excited to dive in and hear more of his story. Um, We met BJ through, we just go by BJ, right? (laughs) Yeah. We met him through some mutual friends and uh, at the March for Jesus event in Augusta, Georgia, and um, just became fans of each other's ministry, followers of each other's ministry. And and, uh, we so enjoy watching him chase after Jesus and bring others along and encourage others in the process. And so we wanted to get him on this podcast because we know he'll be an encouragement to you. Yes. Welcome BJ to the show. It's a joy to be here. I'm excited. I'm very excited as always. Yeah. Well, we're super excited to have you on and we just know that you have just great testimonies throughout your life of, of how you've come up higher in God and just what he's brought you through so let's just go ahead and we'll just dive into the beginning years. Like, how did everything get started? Wow. Well, I'll tell this story off. Um, my ministry started uh, December 14, 2002. I was 11 years old. Um, I remember that Saturday morning just waking up, having this fire to talk about Jesus. So what I did, I got my cassette tape, put in my karaoke machine. And I, I, I hit that play and record button. And I just talked about Jesus. And little did I know that was the start of my ministry. Matter of fact, that ministry is, it ended up being called God's Recording. And that still runs to this day, God's Recording. So that was the start of everything. After that first episode, you know, that cassette tape was being passed around throughout my family to the point it started reaching outside of my family. And people were actually blessed by what God was seeing through me. So ever since then, God has just been using me to um, spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that's when it all began almost 20 years ago. Wow. That's awesome. I love, I love that. that the karaoke player, because I, when I was young <laughs> like that, our mom had a karaoke player and that's how I would record some of my first songs that I've written. Mm-hmm. I would get that yeah. out. That was just the coolest thing. Like, yeah. and so I think that is so awesome that the, you just, you just woke up with this fire in your belly and you just like, I got to get it out. And, mm-hmm. and the faith of a child that says, well, I can do it. I'm, and I'm going to do it right now. And the fact that it impacted so many people at a young age um, is so powerful that sometimes we can disqualify ourselves because we're too young or too old or what don't have the right equipment or whatever it is, but you just used what you had at the age you were 11 years old and, and got the message out. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I was going to say the exact same thing. Like, we know about those cassette tapes. <laughs> yes, oh, yes. I think most of our viewers, too, will know what cassette tapes are, but if mm. they don't, they're missing out. <laughs> Good old days. Yeah, the generation behind us has completely missed out on those cassette tapes and karaoke machines. But what is, so you said that fiery passion, like you just woke up with it one day and, and said, 
you know, I, I got to do something with this. What mm. is that passion that, that drives you and your ministry today? You know, the main thing for me is to win and encourage souls for Christ. You know, um, I've always had a relationship with Jesus from a young age. And I remember wanting to be a preacher at a young age. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once I started ministry at a young age, it just was like my main thing was the gospel got to get out. The gospel got to get out. I didn't really understand what I was really, you know, every, I didn't understand everything about Christ, you know, at the time. And I'm still learning now as a 29-year-old. But it's just, I'm going to work with what I do know. And it's just every time someone comes to me and say, I really received something, you know, or let alone, hey, I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. You know, it's just like, that's why I do what I do. Not just because I'm called and led to by the Holy Spirit, but because it's just something I personally love to do as well. You know, as long as people are being encouraged, as long as souls are being saved, I'm going to continue doing this. You know, I may step down from positions in ministry, but the actual work in ministry would never cease for me. I'm going to constantly do that until the day I die. So that, that what keeps me going on a daily basis. Even when I'm going through things, you know, I say, Lord, you know, we all go through things, but just give me the strength to get up and do what I need to do. So your children could get the word because mm -hmm. the word always got to go out in season and out of season. That's so right. that what keeps me going. That what yeah. really keeps me going. And so kind of walk us through the process of starting from an 11 year old, um, having that passion and then going into your teen years and some difficulties that arose in, in areas of your life. Um, walk us through that process with, with your faith and your, in, in your walk with God and your calling and all of those things and how they played into that difficult season. So in the, you know, start back off the beginning, you know, the only rough thing I dealt with up until the beginning of my ministry was the death of my grandfather in 2000. You know, that was the first time I really experienced a real life hurt. Um, and then I really didn't experience nothing bad until probably 2004 or five. That's when I started to become a teenager. And I, I started to, you know, go through some real life things like anxiety, depression. You know, it got to the point where it started affecting my health. Um, I, I, what I don't really go through, like I used to, I had a condition that, you know, used to, I used to get so stressed out or, anxious to the point I used to just pass out mm -hmm. I mean pass out completely and um at that time I was still trying to do ministry but at the same time it just was like I was running from my call at the same time it just like mm -hmm. I wanted to be normal you know um I never really had friends I'm basically an only child so you know doing ministry feeling alone you know, I'm not alone, but I feel alone. I'm trying to fit in, but at the same time, God has this anointing over my life. And you know, it, it, it really it really was hard going through health issues, going to doctor after doctor. It's got to the point, you know, I really didn't even finish school because I was so sick. I was passing mm -hmm. out, you know, going through stuff. And um, in those 10 years, it was very rough. I, I thought about taking my own life um, a few times, tried to a few times. Um, but it's amazing in the midst of all that God was still using, mm -hmm. you know, people still was getting saved and thing, you know, God was still using my ministry. And, um, it just, I, 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 I kept telling myself, BJ, you got to push through this. You got to push through this. You're going to get through this somehow in some way. Um, those 10 years was rough between like 2004 to at least early to late. 2009 or 10 it, it was some rough times you know it, it was hard trying to keep my head above water trying to stay in prayer mm -hmm. and my prayer life got so much stronger mm -hmm. during those times too as well because I tell people all the time you're going to be in situations sometimes where all you have to do all you're going to have is to talk with Jesus and I had those right. times all the time you know what I had to sit and really talk with him I guess that's why for me, it's easy for me to say pray about it because I, I, I have been in several situations where I had no choice but to pray. Mm -hmm. um, I have had told doctors tell me, BJ, you're never going to, you know, have a normal life. You're, you're not going to do this. You're not going to do that because I was so sick. You know, it was times I, I used to have my episodes, my fainting episodes every day because wow. I was so out of it. Um, it's just now here in 2021, 
I'm close to getting my driver's license, something the doctor said I would never, you know, do. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, other things doctor said I would never going to be able to do. I'm doing that now. You know, being a, now a licensed minister, I'm getting up in front of people, more people spreading the gospel. And some people tell me, how can you used to have anxiety issues, but you can get up in front of people and deliver <laughs> the gospel? I'm like, well, that's, that's just the Holy Spirit in me. It's just now, for the first time since I started getting sick, sick i have not had a fainting episode in one year that's the longest i have ever went amazing with without an episode during a global pandemic right yeah when everybody else was having episodes you were (laughs) yeah and i'm i'm gonna say this i believe i went through all that stuff as a teenager to help people in today's time because Mm. you see that nowadays a lot of people are balanced depression right. mm-hmm. and now I can tell people my story when I tell people my story they are just amazed because they, they look at me and like you went through all that like mm-hmm. medications I was put on none of it never worked and into the everything it's just nothing worked and I knew I, I, I figured out in like 2019 that you know what I think this is just the enemy trying to really attack me because mm-hmm. it's just like I know everybody want to, you know, blame the devil for a lot of stuff, but I know for a fact this is him trying to really bring me down. After all those years, once I start to realize that, that's when things slowly start to get even more better. And now I'm at a point where I haven't had an episode. So um, those 10 years really were rough, but I praise God that, you know, I got through that and I look back on it and praise God for being able to come through that. Now I'm able to help people on that level you know, with anxiety and depression. There's nothing wrong with being saved and going to a counselor. There's nothing wrong with um, saying I need help. Um, And that's something I struggle with. I always try to keep stuff in sometimes instead of going to someone and say I need help or I need this and that. It just, when it comes to, you know, I pray about things, but I didn't talk to nobody about them. And that's Mm -hmm. one thing that I I think that would have played a a huge role if I opened up more on that level. So um, I know I'm talking a lot, but (laughs) it's it's all good. good. (laughs) It's just, you know, um, it's just a lot went on that time. And just, you know, I look at people who used to, you know, when I look, I talk to people who used to pick at me and bully bully me in school. Um, They come to me now asking for prayer and saying, I'm sorry. Wow. I'm sorry for what I did to you. And then there was those who used to tell me, like, sometimes, DJ, stop trying to be like everybody else. Mm. Stop trying to fit in. You go to church. You obviously know Jesus. So I obviously have something for you. And there were times I threw that to a side because I was just like, I was so focused. I wanted friends. I wanted to be normal. But now I was just like, if only I just would have embraced the bully instead of mm-hmm. trying to push it off. But now I'm just glad I do realize that and I embrace that. So um, mm-hmm. those 10 years were really life-changing and it really molded and shaped where I'm at today because now I could use those years in my ministry to help not just to the older generation, but especially the younger generation. Now being the youth minister at my church, you know, it's just, uh, and that's another thing, being the youth minister, that's insane. I never thought I would be a youth minister. <laughs> You do need to be in, you need to have all your, no anxiety there, because that's, that's yeah. all craziness all over the place. <laughs> exactly. So that's that with um, my teen years and my health is just, it really, it was a hard experience, but it molded and shaped me for what I'm experiencing in today's time. Yeah, that's so good. And we just so appreciate your vulnerability and your openness, mm-hmm. because I think that is something in the church, just throughout the years as we've we've developed this idea that we have to have it all together because we're Christians and because we mm-hmm. go to church. And I love when you said I can be a Christian and go to counseling. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Like we should embrace that. Um, I know even in my life, like counseling has been such a, a great help and, and just, and helped me work through things like you're talking about with anxiety or even like perfectionism and things like that. And I think we have to come to the point where we're okay where we understand like that, that's okay. Like I can be a Christian and have anxiety, but it's not going to stay that way. That's the difference Mm -hmm. is, is the world wants to accept it and be like, well, this is just how you are. And it's always going to be this way. But when we're in Christ, we're a new creation. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. we can bring our anxiety to him. We can bring our depression. We can bring suicidal thoughts to him and he's going to help us overcome them. Yeah. We can overcome. We don't have to stay the way that we are. And 
I think that's something the church is really going to have to grasp is just learning how to be vulnerable with, with each other. And like you said, had you been vulnerable and open to people, it may not have gotten to the point that it was, but because as Christians, we have to wear these masks or we think that we do things escalate, I believe further than they ever really need to, but it's time that we start taking off the masks. It's time that we start, uh, stop holding ourselves to these impossible standards so that God can really move in our lives. Yeah. That's right. You know, like God doesn't move with our, our pretenses or, or what we pretend to be or to do. Like he, he wants to work with the raw material, mm. with the vulnerability. And so I love that you shared that because that's something that I, as rings true in my life. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, for sure. And what I hear too, which I don't think many people understand is you can get a calling and you can be operating in your calling. Mm -hmm. And so many people are like, Oh, that's so awesome. You're doing what you were made to do. You're, you're, you're out there, you're living what, what God designed you to do and, and you're preaching and you're teaching and this, that, and you have these opportunities that are coming to you and they see that side of the thing of the, of the coin, I guess, but they don't see the price that's paid. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's a process from the call to activation to fulfillment, fulfillment to mm -hmm. to it, it's a process it's it's a continuous process and as you were speaking i was thinking about the story of joseph mm -hmm. and how that so resonates with your story and 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 how he he was set apart he was different than all of his brothers and and the lord had given him a dream and the lord had given him a destiny and he was despised for it. Mm -hmm. And he really, he, he was really persecuted for it in a lot of ways and sold into, and his brother sold him off and left him for dead basically. And he was sold into slavery and all of these things. And, um, he was in prison, but he still had the anointing. He was right. still interpreting dreams in prison. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm sure there were many times in Joseph's life where he was thinking, God, what about that dream you gave me? <laughs> what about how all my brothers were going to bow down to me eventually? And, and here I am left for dead and in a pit and now I'm in a prison cell and all of these things. But his calling was never, uh, it was never taken away. It was always right. there, but there was a process that went through and the ending like those schoolmates coming up to you and saying, mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. I Can you pray for me? What you have, what you paid the price for and walking through, I need your walk with Jesus. I need that. Mm -hmm. and, and Joseph at the, you know, at the end of the story, he, he was promoted and, and became a leader in, mm -hmm. in Egypt and provided food and, and saved so many lives. And, and his brothers came back and said, once they realized who he was and said, I'm so sorry, we're so sorry. We had no idea what, we had no idea that we would need, need you and, and what you carried. And so I, I hope that's an encouragement to others that feel like they have this call on their life, but are feeling inadequate in so many ways, or the situation they're in in life right now is, is so contrary to what they believe God called them to that don't get weary in the well-doing. Don't give up in the middle of the process, even if you're in the pit, because um, he still has purpose and plans for you. Right? That's right. True. Well, and another key thing, I was like typing notes while you were talking, because I'm like, there's so many good things. One of the things that you said was that God was preparing you ahead of time. And you had no idea, though, when you were in that process that everything you were walking through was literally leading up. And it, it wasn't just for this, but it was leading up to a year like 2020 where everybody's full of anxiety. Nobody knows what's going on. And like we said, like if there was any year for you to have those episodes, like that was the year. Yeah. But yeah. here you were standing firm and strong because you had already walked through it. God already foresaw what was going to happen. And so everything that you were walking through as, as difficult as it was, as much as you couldn't understand, as lonely as it was, God was preparing you to be, to be the strength that people needed to draw from in, in literally a world pandemic. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you, if you think about that, like that's no small calling, yeah. <laughs> that's no small thing God was preparing you for. And I just ask listeners, the things that you've walked through, 
what is God preparing you for? Mm. Like, just think about it. I know we, we don't fully know. And I know even BJ, there's, there's still things ahead for you that God's preparing you for, but you know, just sit and think that the, the things that you walked through, what is God preparing you for? You're, you're here for such a time as this. Mm-hmm. You have something to add, BJ? I mean, I don't know. My mind is completely blown nowadays at the things God is putting in my life. You know, um, just recently I was honored at the Eddie Awards um, for what I have done in the ministry. And, you know, it's just that whole time at the Eddie Awards. I'm just thinking like I'm a little country boy from Augusta, Georgia, who started his ministry in his bedroom at the edge of his bed with a karaoke machine. And now I'm here in Jacksonville being honored for what, you know, I have done in the ministry and it just was like, I never looked to be recognized. Like getting awards never was a goal of mine. I never have been, you know, and never, you know, will be, but I just took that as a moment of, as a reminder that, Hey, you know, God is definitely doing something. He's using me and people are actually receiving something. And, you know, um, looking back over the years, it's just like leading up to 2020. It's just like, wow, I would have never thought the world will be where it's at in a, in a pandemic and being put in situations where, you know, a few years ago, if I was put in these situations, I probably wouldn't have been able to handle it. Right. Um, last year, I, I prayed with so many people with balance, depression, anxiety, um, dealing with certain things that, you know, I have went through in life and now being able to help people on, on a on a level where I was at some years ago, it's it's just it's mind blowing. And then plus I wrote a book in the midst of a pandemic. You know, mm-hmm. it's just like you know, and people and it's now people are getting blessed through my book. It's just you know when you truly, I'm I'm gonna encourage everybody to do this. When you are going through something, God is trying to you know you should just embrace what He's trying to do in your life. Don't run from it. I right. take my advice, don't run from it. Because eventually God's going to get what he wants. But don't run because, you know, what he's trying to do with you now is going to prepare you for what's ahead. And now um, being able to minister to people and help people with things that I have personally battled through or went through, it's just, it's mind blowing. And um, it's not it's not about be trying to become famous or a celebrity. I, I just love right. spreading the gospel and, and, and helping folks come to Christ and encouraging them in that walk. I mean, I tell you, that that's just so fulfilling to me. You know, um, not not people talking about BJM Ministries or talking about Minister BJ Major, talking about Jesus. You know, the only thing I want to hear this ministry name come up in is, oh, I found Jesus through BJM Ministry. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, I found how. I, out how Jesus was is is this and that right. I, that's the only time I really you know want to hear about that because it's all about Jesus at the end of the day and I tell you um you just gotta let you just gotta embrace what he's doing I always tell you that embrace what he's trying to do don't run from it don't think less mm-hmm. of yourself God sees something great in you um that's 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 why all I can say with that just embrace what he's doing right now and I guarantee you when you look back on it years from now you'll be like I thank God that I actually embraced what he was doing. I embraced that anointing Mm. over my life. Mm. Yeah, that's good. And it goes back to what you said earlier. Uh, You just said something to the extent of just like I worked with what I knew or I worked with what I had. And I think sometimes we as Christians think we just have to have it all together. We have to have all the equipment we need. You know, we need the, the best setup we can have. And it's like, no, just do work with what you got now and the resources you have and the connections you have now, because that's what God, God builds on those things. Mm -hmm. Like it's never, all right. Or it's very rarely, if it does happen that God gives you a word and then like the next day it happens (laughs) very Mm -hmm. rarely. Usually it's God gives you a word. And then you walk through this entire process as, as you know, he helps you build the foundation and, and gives you the character and the integrity and the tools and the people that you need to fully fulfill it. So I just encourage everyone listening, like BJ said, start now, whatever it is that God's leading you to do, he's, he's calling you to it for a reason. And I know even things in in our lives that God's asking us to do that. I know personally for me, I've kind of like tried to put the brakes on a little bit, (laughs) but it's like, no, that's encouragement for me that no Whitney, God's calling you to that for a reason. And so you need to just walk it out and let him let him deal with the results of whatever happens. You know, you just work on your obedience and let God bring whatever he's supposed to bring to the situation. 
That's right. So I love that you had that encouragement for us today. <laughs> yes, that, it, it really is good. And um, for people that are in the middle of that process that, that don't understand why they have these emotions or why they have these thoughts or why they're depressed or why they can't get out of that pit, <laughs> I, I know your story is um, a light to them right now. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about your books, like what the book that you just mentioned about that you wrote during the pandemic, what, what's the story behind that? Or what do you hope readers get out of that? Well, I'm, I got the, I actually got that book in front of me right now. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Look, show look that, that cover. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so this is my second book that just came out um, in November of last year. Can you see me now? And the funny story behind this book, I was on Facebook live April of last year. And I was reminded of the story of when Thomas was doubting Jesus in the book of in the book of John. And I was thinking of that story. And when Jesus and we said, I'm not going to believe that he has risen unless I'm, I'm able to put my um, fingers in his in the nail marks in his hand and in his side. And when Jesus appeared before him, basically, when he offered that to Thomas, basically, Jesus was saying, can you see me now? Can, do you believe me now? And I'm telling you, after I did that Facebook live video that next morning. I woke up and God started giving me these words and I put them down on paper and I turned it into a spoken word piece. Mm. So I, I, I always was working on a book to come out later last year, but God said, no, this is going to be your book. It's going to be based on the spoken word piece. And basically the spoken word piece was based on the pandemic. Basically like, you know, I'm, you know, I didn't cause COVID-19 but I'm using this time to answer your prayer. A lot of you say, I need more time. Now I'm shutting everything down. I'm, I'm giving you that. Now, will you, you know, can you see me now? Do you see who I am now? So I put that all in this book, in this book, Can You See Me Now? And my prayer is that everyone that reads this book will either be strengthened in their walk with Christ or find Jesus Christ in their life because I didn't hold back at all. <laughs> I, I let the Lord completely use me like never before to write the, this book wow. and um it's it's powerful i believe you know like you know god didn't cause COVID 19 but he used it as a time to really give people an opportunity to really get to know him for who he is you know it's 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 easy to praise him for what he's done but truly can you worship him for who he mm -hmm. is and find out who yeah. he is That's good. so i believe this book is is a way to help you really understand who he is and why he does the things that he does so that's what this book is about I like that and I like how um you you say God didn't cause COVID-19 but he's he's using the year and what happened because he nothing goes to waste with him and I I that's what we've truly believed through it is just the heart work that's been going on in people the relation relationship work that's been going on in people we've only uh media and and all of that has really only allowed us to see the negative mm -hmm. things, the negative products that have come from that or what was going on in, in the middle of it. But God, he was working. I know he was working behind the scenes and doing some amazing things in people's hearts and even, even strengthening their faith and saying, why do you believe what you believe? Mm -hmm. Are you going to trust me when things aren't going your way or everything around you seems to be crumbling is your faith firmly planted on that foundation what and i think there was some really hard questions that 2020 kind of put in all of our faces and so i think your book from what you've spoken of it is just kind of some of those answers to people putting putting language uh in place for people to to kind of express mm -hmm. and go through the emotions and and the thought processes of of what the last year was and so i think that is so cool and another example of um god preparing things a little bit ahead of time <laughs> and so because if you were able to release it at the at of november of 2020 right. i mean there had to be some work ahead of time mm -hmm. <laughs> going on there and that's so good. that's that's mm -hmm. another testament to that yeah yes um it's amazing how that book originally, I thought it wasn't going to be published until early this year. 
but the way it happened, it happened way quicker than my first book. My first book took a couple of months, but this one, even my publisher was amazed mm -hmm. at how fast, you know, the process went and how fast it was available. So definitely God definitely had a specific plan and still does through this book, Can You See Me Now? And if you don't mind, I want to talk about my first book too a little. Yeah, yeah go of for it. I was just about to ask. <laughs> yeah, I was actually trying to find the cover because I don't have a book in front of me. But the first book is called The Pursuit of God's Peace. That came out in April of 2018. And that was my first book. And um, that book really, I, I have told people this for the last three or four years. That was basically written in my brokenness. Mm -hmm. um, I... I was married for six years and um, went through a divorce. And during that season where, I, where the divorce was happening, um, I was working on my first book, but I, you know, I just didn't feel like it was right. And then God told me, this is what I want you to write about. And I was reminded of Philippians 4, 6, and 7. That's what act, that was actually the foundation of scripture for my first book. And um, my main thing was I wanted peace in all this while I was going through. And I remember going to Barnes and Noble all the time, sitting by the cafe, just working on that book and putting everything down on paper. And it, later did I, you know, I realized later, like, hey, this actually could be put put together in a book. And so mm -hmm. um, I just kept on writing. And that first book, Pursuit of God's Peace, came out. And basically that book is like a manual on how to experience peace in God, not just any kind of peace but that peace which surpasses all mm -hmm. understanding. And it's funny how that whole thing worked. Like my friend, she had her book come out. Um, so I wrote the book in 2017 and come out to 2018. My friend, she published her book, her first book in May of 2017. And her publisher is now my publisher. And oh, awesome. I was looking for a publisher and she's happened to be a Christian. So I remember when I first saw her, I was, God told me like, that's your publisher go talk to her <laughs> wow. and so it just everything came together for that first book and so and and here's the crazy part i did a three saturday webinar based on that first book with people who have went through a terrible breakup mm. or divorce and it's just like wow I, I thought i would never do anything like that talking about the book and talking about how you can experience peace in god after a, a breakup or divorce and you know I, it's a lot of things when it comes to trying to get peace that a lot of people don't see and understand like you know you gotta watch who's around you gotta watch mm -hmm. you know uh, make sure that you are forgiving people you gotta make sure that you're receiving forgiveness as well it's just a lot of things that a lot of things could prevent you from experiencing peace in god and i broke it all down in my first book and that and that first like these two books they they are very special in their own way the first book it, i mean it was selling like crazy to the point it was selling a number of copies overseas i remember i think wow. some in australia um the united kingdom and you know my publisher was letting me know all the time your book had been so here and there i'm like <laughs> I was like, that gotta be God, because I'm not, I'm promoting, but I, ain't, you know, I didn't think that promotion was actually reaching, you know, overseas. Mm -hmm. And this particular book, you know, Can You See Me Now, my new book, is, it's, it's really starting to pick up even more now than what it was back in November. It's just, you know, my, my, my feel good moment is that people are receiving special you know special kind of word from the Lord through these books, you know, mm -hmm. how to experience peace in God, you know getting to know who God is and understanding, you know, why he do things and why, you know, we're going through this and what he's actually doing. It's just these books have, it's the same mission, but different messages is what I'm trying to right. say. Right. And, you know, it's fun that these books came at a very interesting time in my life. I wasn't trying to write, The Pursuit of God's Peace wasn't going to be my first book. And Can You See Me Now wasn't going to be my second book because <laughs> I had totally different plans, but God stepped in and said otherwise. And now I'm working on my third book for um, January 2022 to um, culminate with my 20th anniversary in ministry. So awesome. um, God, God, God has his way of um, doing things. So yeah. those are my two books. That's great. Yeah, I love that because we've often talked about with, with our songs, we feel like God has 
prepared them ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So we've written them. We've even recorded some of them. And we just feel like, wow, I, I thought that would have a bigger impact or I thought more people would resonate with it. Or, you know, you just kind of have these expectations. But then later on, all of a sudden that song blows up and, and all these people are downloading it or asking about it or telling us these testimonies of like, man, I needed, well, had we not recorded that song ahead of time, it wouldn't have been in time, in time right? for that person. Yeah. And that's why it's just so important that as you feel led, like you had other books in mind, but God, God directed you a different way. And thankfully you followed that because those people who went through a bad breakup or a divorce needed what you had in that moment. Mm -hmm. They couldn't wait two more years for you to get that together. So God, God's been preparing you with these books and different things ahead of time so that they're in time and on time right. for what people are needing right now. And that's just, to me, sounds like a, a good description of your life. <laughs> <laughs> a theme for you is being prepared ahead of time to be in time. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's an encouragement to people as well as don't be afraid to write or create or build during the process, that's during good. it in the midst of your brokenness. Yeah. Some of the, the most, uh, heartfelt and and really just the the songs that hit people in the gut are 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 written amidst the the tragedies and and just the process and i think so many times we want to get we want to get to the end and say look how far god brought me but there's emotions and mm -hmm. there's uh, feelings and 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 verbiage that mm -hmm. you can only truly express in the midst of the brokenness and so don't always wait to be on the other side to start writing like you did, mm -hmm. BJ. That's what I want to encourage our, our listeners is don't wait till you're on the other side. Mm. Start right where you're at yeah, and allow God to use those emotions, even if they're not pretty, mm -hmm. <laughs> even right. if you got some anger yeah. um, or, or whatever, it doesn't mean that everything's going to end up in the finished product, right. but man, we're going to be able to see the process of this is a, B, and C, how God brought me through. That's right. So true. Yeah. That's good. And God's not, God's not scared of our vulnerability mm -hmm. and God's not scared of our emotions. Like that's how he made us. He has emotions, but it's just a matter of, okay, what are we going to do with them? And where do we go from here? And it sounds like you've just gone through so many, um, just amazing processes and journeys with God that weren't always easy weren't always like clean and tidy. They may have been messy at times, but look at how God is using that and look mm -hmm. at how he's partnering with you and helping people literally around the world. Amen. So thank you. We just want to say thank you for um, being that light and being that forerunner to go mm -hmm. before, even when it was just you running the race, even when people didn't understand, even when you didn't understand why you were going through what you were going through because your ministry and just you as a person, right. not even just what you have to offer, but you as a person mm -hmm. as BJ, like are so necessary and needed yep. today. And so just thank you for your obedience. Thank you for your yes. Mm -hmm. And we just want to, we just want you to let us know where can we purchase your books? Where can we watch your, your YouTube videos and, and all of that? How can we follow you on social media? Give us all the deets. Okay, so to purchase my books is very simple and easy. You know, my first book, The Pursuit of God's Peace, and Can You See Me Now? You could purchase those on Amazon.com or Barnes and Noble. Just type in the title of the books and they should, you know, they should automatically come up. I'm um, just look for my name, Bert from BJ Major. Um, also, when it comes to um, my shows, I have a YouTube show, um, The Sunday Word Report um that is a new episode is posted every second and fourth sunday at 3 p.m eastern standard time um just type in bjm ministries in the youtube search engine that's b-e-j-m ministries on youtube and subscribe so you can be updated on everything that's posted on that channel and i have a podcast the gosh recording podcast i mentioned that earlier you know i'm, mm -hmm. I'm still doing gosh recording after all these years a new episode every monday and friday at 12 30 p.m um check it out you could check it out all major digital uh, media platforms that you can listen to podcasts on um go ahead and subscribe keep up with me on social media um facebook um 
what is my face? I got I got a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, the God's, um, go ahead and search for the God's Recording Podcast on Facebook, DJM Ministries. Um, you can add me, my personal page, Bertram DJ Major. And when it comes to TikTok, Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram, it's the same username, B-E-J-M underscore ministries. Very awesome, simple, easy. Awesome. TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram. So I believe I covered everything. Yeah, <laughs> I think you did think too. So. <laughs> I think you did too. And we want to encourage our listeners to go check him out, go check out his books. And if you just want encouragement on your social media feed, mm-hmm. go follow him. And, and he's always posting amazing things and just, he's a light, he's just mm-hmm. a light. And so I think we all could, could use some of that on our, on our social medias and in our lives. Yes. And so thank you, BJ, for um, coming on to coming up higher today. And, um, we look forward to following all that God has for you in, in the future and with your ministry. And so, but I, I just feel prompted. I want you to go ahead and just say a prayer for some of our listeners who may be struggling with depression or anxiety, or may find themselves in the middle of the pit, like we talked about in a divorce or whatever it may be, but they feel like they have a calling on their lives. Can you just go ahead and lift them up today as we close? Most definitely. Let us pray. Gracious, loving, caring Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for this another opportunity to just be with you and to call on your name. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for those who are going through something right now, whether it's a divorce, heartbreak, anxiety, depression, whatever the case is, you know their name, you know their situation, and yes, you know their condition. Lord, touch, heal, deliver, and set free. We truly know that all things do work together for the good of them that love you and are the called according to your purpose. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister out there who's struggling right now. Lord, give them what they need in order to continue on. Build them up where they are weak. Give them strength. Give them comfort. Let them know that truly, even though we go through things in life, they are going through things in life. Let them know that there is truly a light at the end of the tunnel. You are truly a all-knowing, all-loving, all-caring God. And we know that you have all power in your hand. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the blood that was shed on Calvary so long ago. Through Jesus Christ, we not only have eternal life, but we have it. Defeat is not in our DNA. It's all victory. So I pray for those. Who, who are struggling right now, I pray that they realize that they do have victory. Even though this life is going to be life of tribulations at times, we know that, that you have overcame the world. So we thank you for what you have done. We praise you in advance for what you're getting ready to do. We truly believe that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has the energy of the heart of man, the great things that you have in store. Even though things are hard now, truly, the best is truly yet to come. Lord, be with us all. Be with those who are struggling. Be with us right now. Have your way. Not our will, Lord, but let your will be done. We decrease, Lord, so that you may increase in us right now. Have thine own way. In the precious, powerful, everlasting name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, and ask it all. Amen. 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 Thank you again, BJ, for coming on the show. And thank you listeners for tuning in this week. And we look forward to coming up higher with you again next week. God bless. Hey, thanks so much for listening to today's episode. One of the best ways to come up higher is through worship. Our desire is to help you cultivate meaningful worship moments through the music we create. You can listen to our music on Apple, Google, Spotify, Pandora, or wherever you buy or stream music. Physical copies of our albums can be purchased on our website as well, alishaandwhitney.com store. So join us in coming up higher together through worship. <laughs>